welcome. Today we're going to be talking about how to find products to sell on Amazon in 2024. Keep in mind, I'm looking at this through the lens of, oh, focus you son of a Okay, 33,000 last 30 days. I'm looking at this product research through the lens of products I would actually want to sell. I'm a made in the USA Amazon FBA seller, so I'm not sourcing stuff from Alibaba. I'm not competing with other cheap sellers selling the same product, changing something small, bundling it. I'm looking at this through the lens of how can I start a real business that actually pays me a salary that I can take money off of, out of and live off of. And to do that, I need it to be stable. I don't need it to be massive yet, but if I can secure a 27, 30% profit margin off of 400, $500,000 in revenue, I can start paying myself a healthy salary for the area that I live in and live comfortably. And like that's, that's the lens that I'm looking at this through. Um, of course, there's then the further aspirations to, you know, make millions or whatever, but I don't really care about that right now. Let's get started. A little bit different editing style, by the way, if you're new to the channel. I don't do flashy, quick edits. Most of the time, it's just one take, um, me talking. I actually work on this business and do this, so I don't have a ton of time to sit around and make fancy videos. I certainly don't make enough off this channel to pay an editor, so bear with me. <laughs> um, but I like to help and uh, document what I'm doing. So this is the best sellers list. We're going to start with the, um, the free way of doing this. Obviously, we've all seen the videos about how to do it with, you know, product research tools. Let's just go old school. Um, just you can do this right now. You can follow along, open a new tab if you want. So the best sellers list is an area that a lot of people will tell you to avoid actually, um, like private label sellers, because they're like, oh, these are the, you know, the things that you don't want to sell, right? I want to sell little niche weird products and like the weirder, the better. I used to even say that myself. Um, but I've, I've had a huge change of heart on that. And the thing that I sell now, I sell against, you know, name brand competitors who have 14,000 reviews. Um, and I use the fact that I am nimble and a disruptive young new brand um, to go into a space that would otherwise be seen as daunting, intimidating for private label sellers and do exactly that. I disrupt it. It doesn't have to be expensive, by the way. I started my first, you know, not my first product. I've sold like close to 20 products now, but th this product, I only sell one product right now. It's made in the US. Again, bear with me if you see my channel before, but um, it cost me about $6,000 to get it off the ground, launch the brand. And everything else was just reinvesting the money we were making from the product. It was profitable from month one. So I was able to just literally invest the profits back into the business to grow it to the size it is now. Um, and that's the strategy going forward. Okay, patio lawn and garden, let's check this out. Already I see something that I would probably like to do. So here's a few conceptions that we have to break down in order for you to get where I'm coming from. This idea that we want products with less than 75 reviews, this idea that we want to source something different than what already exists, which you're on the right track, but there's these minute changes that have to be made. And this idea that we want to go into these really small yet high demand markets. And I think almost the entire opposite of that. I think the money to be made almost always I've related to this. I know Tony, Tony Robbins said this in some books. Maybe that's why it impacted me when I was reading those when I was like a teenager in high school, um, thinking about what I wanted to do. And it's like the money is made where everyone else isn't. <laughs> so when everyone else is screaming, losing their mind, the economy is turned upside down, someone's getting rich because they're doing something other than that. And so what the direction that I see Amazon FBA going in 2024 is that we're going to see a lot more real businesses built. And hopefully I have something to do with that. I'd love to encourage you um, to do that, though I can't technically give financial advice. I'm just sharing what I know to be true and what works for me. Um, we don't have to follow this FBA guru strategy of spend a thousand on the course, spend a thousand on the product, spend 200 on photography, spend 20 bucks on a logo. It's like, it's all backwards, right? You should be spending most of your money on R and D in incredible product design. Now I'm, I'm really getting ahead of myself. That's the part of the business that just I'm passionate about and I, I love talking about. So that's what fuels these videos. But anyway, the, um, the product research, let's get back to it. So the, the thing that I said, I, I already liked was this bone meal here, bone meal fertilizer. Let's open that. 
I like how simple it is. Um, I also know for a fact, based on what I know to be true about sourcing them in, uh, in the US, which like I said, I do, um, this would be something I could source in the US. I keep, sorry, I just realized you are up here now. I was looking over here this whole time. That's the old camera for the intro. You're right here, hello. The bone meal can be sourced from the US. The wood pellets can be sourced from the US. The bird food can be sourced from the US. The hose, the thermometer, the hoe, the weeder. Sorry, I called it a hoe. It ain't a hoe. Um, it's a weeder. Uh, the plant food. Plant food can be sourced here. Sorry. The pressure sprayer. Those things, now we start getting into molding. We start getting into things that have to be made out of country. So this one actually is made in the USA, but it's probably because they're manufacturing themselves. The way that I like to think, and this was like a, a prerequisite for me to start my new brand was I was like, I want it to be made in the USA. I want to be the best locally sourced product possible. And I looked at it through that lens. And so I picked a product that was conducive to that. And the old boring markets that no one wants to sell in are the ones that can be done here. So think about like if you were trying to start a, trying to start a physical product business in your state, what's around you? What are people buying locally? Like legitimately, we, we can build businesses this way. We, we don't have to be so new age and so you know worldwide thinking it can just be can i make a six-figure company locally and, and i brought that kind of mentality to my amazon brand and i was like let me let me just look at products that are conducive to that i don't need to sell complex products you know look there's six hundred thousand dollars a month of fertilizer being sold there's a hundred grand a month of bird food being sold would it be possible for a new disruptive bird, disruptive, meaning think picture liquid death versus LaCroix brand to enter bird food? Is that possible? Yes, of course it is. Yes, of course it is. And, and people would buy into it. Okay. It's really not hard to get someone to buy. You just have to get the perceived value to be higher than the money they're holding their hand. And nowadays with one click purchasing, there's actually in that equation, nothing really being hold, held in their hand. You just have to convince them like, this is really cool. And so you already looked it up. Why wouldn't you buy my product? I made it really cool just for you. Let's actually open the bird food. Let's open, let's see. Weed killer, sure. Can we do this in a way in which it's not disruptive to our environment? It's locally sourced, it's still effective, and it is, you see where I'm going with this? No mess bird food. Let's check it out. Tomcat, bait chunks, pale. What in the heck? Let's open it, 30,000 reviews. I love to see that. So many people buying some bullcrap product with 50s branding. You're telling me if I went in there with better branding that actually appealed to a modern audience that I couldn't sell there with a brand character and a brand story? Yeah, I could definitely do that. And the cool thing is we're eliminating competition by looking in this way, right? We go into old, boring markets that have been around for 40, 50, 60, 100 years. And then we just sell in a new modern way to a new uncontested market space. It's like a superpower. We're, we're really getting rid of all of what's wrong with private label in that it's like a competition and a race to the bottom. And I was never able to solve that until I started thinking dramatically differently. So wouldn't it make sense that instead of sourcing what everyone else is trying to source, from the same place they're all trying to source it for the same costs and fees that everyone else is paying to just go and do what everyone else isn't where there's only a couple brands to compete with even if they're large and they're big and scary because they sell a lot and they have a name brand and they're in home depot or whatever in these cases you're telling me no one would buy our product if we branded it in a way that actually spoke to them to their identity of course not. Okay, let's check these out. I honestly, this, this might be a shorter video than I thought because let's see, bone meal is very, um, I really like the idea of this one, which is funny because it's like, really? Bone meal for flowers? 
Now picture this. I already know there's existing demand. They're selling they have 15,000 reviews on this. Let's do bone meal fertilizer. And just to solidify it, we'll go, let's do a new tab on my ancient computer. Um, bam. And open this bad boy up. Bone meal fertilizer. Okay. There they are. One thing that I do like to do, this is where we can use some of our new tactics, uh, like Helium 10, to analyze an old boring market. You can blend the old and the new. So look at it through the lens of data-driven action, data-driven um, research. But look into these markets that, you know, our parents, in my case, maybe you are old enough to be my parent, or our grandparents would have potentially started a business locally in some farm town in Texas 70 years ago, right? Okay, we're really taking some time on this one. So this is not... Um, cut. Cut. Here we go. Okay, 6,000 search volume. Very good. And check it out. That um, The one that we liked was doing $186,000 per month. Is doing. And here's the coolest part. It's sold by Amazon. Again, everyone's so scared of that. I love it. I honestly do love that. Because Amazon is not going to waste their time selling in a market where they can't make money. And now you're probably wondering, why, how the heck can they sell it for $8 to make money? Well, it's because Amazon's selling it. They don't have to pay their own fees. They don't have a referral fee. Um, they have the stripped down version of a fulfillment fee because their fulfillment fee for you, they're profiting off of. Um, so they can get away with charging incredibly cheap. And in fact, seller in my market, that I just showed you at the beginning of this video, has about 14,000 reviews, is sold by Amazon, and is a third of the price of my product. So I'm speaking from my point of view, from my experience, this is not a problem. I'm not theorizing here that this isn't a problem. It really hasn't been for me. And I target their listing and I actively make sales off their listing. Um, I did five figures worth of sales last year off of a listing just like that. That's much cheaper than me and sold by Amazon. So this is not theory. It's actually what's working for me. Um, and I would challenge you when you're doing your research to include in this business model a believability score. So just in anything that you're learning about, ask, has this person actually done that and can they prove it? I have always followed this model of complete transparency here on this channel where I'm just like, this is what's working. This is what's not. I'm not rich yet. Working on it check it out <laughs> um so yeah anyway subscribe down below if that sounds appealing to you i personally can't stand the uh like disgenuine ungen ingenuine i don't know what the word is i didn't go to college damn it but yeah i i can't stand that stuff um okay worm castings potential another product there's really like so when we look at bone meal fertilizer this is what i'm saying there there is not a lot there is this one. What else do we have? This one. Really expensive, really obscure, not even prime. Actually, is this one even prime? Oh, I don't think I'm signed in. I think that's... Maybe I am. I don't know. Uh, this one is. It's a newer seller, actually. And by the way, this is not what I consider... So you're... Like, this is not a disruptive brand to me. To me, disruptive would come through... The, the lens through which it worked for me is I went into a market like this. It's not really a lens. The way it worked for me is I went into a market like this and I used edgy branding where no one would expect it. So I literally was just like, if heli um, <laughs> helium 10 can sell water, <laughs> if liquid death can sell water in a can that's edgy and looks unlike anything there is dark, a little scary. I was like, what if I just sold like a natural product in a market like this that was doing the same thing like on the inside it is the best product in the market 
So I have my value proposition there in the metric by which customers actually care about that is something called value innovation, where I actually removed things that were unnecessary, added things the customer really wanted, and did my R&D through the lens of, that's like my new favorite term, through the lens, through the lens of the customer's actual desires and problems. So to me, earth science is not disruptive. It makes sense here, but it doesn't stand out really. It's expected. So how can I do the unexpected in a market where um, everything is expected? I see bone meal, this one or this one, great. Now notice they are at $16.95. I think I could probably sell at $19.99, $24.99 even, with even more jarring um, branding, brand story, and character creation. So I like to do this thing called, uh, I did in my market, character creation, uh, kind of based off of like the big brands in the world like Geico. Um, so we think of the gecko that, that that's kind of who's selling their product. It's like their brand mascot, right? So for me, I took the, the main dream outcome of my customer, evolved it into this character and put them nice and big on the packaging. And I spent a lot of money on that. It was like hundreds, hundreds of dollars, hundreds more in testing, um, to get this vector file created and this illustration done, illustration style locked in, lots of revisions and tweaking. But once we got it, it was it's pretty jarring on the page in the best way. Like it, you're really like, holy heck. And so for bone meal, I could picture maybe a third of the bag is taken up by like a bone character and he's like gardening. <laughs> Wouldn't that be kind of funny? Like a big femur and he's like, you know, got like little garden gloves on. And he's working in the garden or something. And like big, right? Like make it be the main thing. So a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, don't tell me what the product is. Show me what it is and who it's for. That's what I do here. I, I like bone meal. Honestly, like just seeing the amount of sales they're doing, the amount of search volume, 6,000, there, there's other terms similar. I'm going to tell you right now and I'm not BSing you. I have no reason to, I would sell this product. I would, I really would. Um, I think I could find a US manufacturer for it. It's gonna be cheap as dirt. Like, obviously it's freaking like a byproduct. And then I would look th look at what customers actually want here. So the next thing that I would do is I would, I'd probably go to the reviews. This one has a thousand, so let's check that out. Go to the reviews, most recent is good. Um, Oh, and this is interesting too. So like if people are using it for like um, a cannabis market or like hemp, it's like, is there a specific plant that people are using this primarily for? Then we can gear the branding even more towards that. If I figured out that 65% of the market were using this for um, roses or for tomatoes, I would greatly consider working that into my... Um, listing my creative roses um different types of plants so that's it it's not hard um let's let's go check out some of the other ones we opened so that was bone meal i would sell that i really would now bird food wild bird food um wonder what the term is there so wild bird food that's like what they're actually calling this let's check that out because there is a difference right i mean this is not for like pet birds it's just like an outdoor one okay and already look there's like a game bird block um i think they're looking at that through the lens of hunting different target audience, right? And so I would build my packaging out differently. Okay, here's another interesting point. I really like these markets because these like old boring commodity based markets, you would have started the brand here 100 years ago, that kind of model made in the USA. Um, most of the time, what you're selling is not the product, it's the feeling. And so in other markets, it's more geared towards the product, like traditional private label markets, like if I looked up like a lemon juicer, lemon squeezer, whatever, it's like, I'm showing the product in the main image, the packaging kind of falls wayside. When you're showing the packaging main image and it's the delivery mechanism for the brand feeling and brand story, it gives you a platform on which to stand out. 
it's like a built-in preview or teaser for your brand right as soon as you see the main image it's like boom if you do it right it can really shock people and as we know with an amazon sales funnel we just want to move people to check out so all that amazon is is a big um big traffic source for us and that's why i like selling there is because it really simplifies getting in front of customers who already want my product I have, by the way, spent thousands of dollars on ads with the same brand externally. And trust me, it's a lot harder to get traffic to your listing when they're not deeply engaged, red hot leads like Amazon has. Um, we were like 100% ACoS off Amazon. On Amazon, our total ACoS is like 12% on any given day, 10% some days, 14% average. It's like we're actually profiting on our customer acquisition and then even making more money off them and the lifetime value of them. But um, let's check this out. So wild bird food. First thing I like to do is look at uh, search volume a little bit. By the way, uh, the Helium 10 tool that I'm using, I have a affiliate link with them. It gives you a discount. You do like 20% off for your six months or 10% off for life. Um, so if you don't have this tool yet, you want to start doing your product research um, gives me a little kickback, helps support the channel, and uh, you get a discount, so win-win. Uh, okay, 4,000 search volume. Let's check out the search volume graph, actually. Go all time. Yeah, very seasonal, right? Uh, spring through summer, makes sense. It's not dead in the winter, though. So we can assume to have great summers. And then 3,000 searches in the winter. Okay, this was inflated. This is like uh, pandemic stuff over here is the more natural fluctuation. It's about twice as big in the, in the summer. And so right now they're doing a quarter million. It is winter. So maybe they're doing half a million in the summer and there's some really big numbers here. And then one thing to keep in mind is the sales velocity on this page, <laughs> meaning like number of monthly sales. Cause to get on this page, we have to compete with that. So we have to sell if we want a spot in the top 10 here you know, negate four of the sponsored ones, start here and go boom. Uh, we have to sell about 100, you know, units a day. Um, if we wanted to spot in the top 20, looks like we can start selling. Some of these are now falling into the, you know, 30, 40, 50 units a day range. And then, you know, as we get further down, you start seeing listings that are much, much smaller. Um, something to keep in mind, Amazon sells every single one of these. That I don't have experience with selling, and that might be a little bit too dramatic because, um, the price they're going to be able to achieve for some of these bigger bags, like a 10 pound bag for $17.99, five pounds for $10. You might end up with this crazy discrepancy where even if you make something really great because of what they're used to seeing, the juxtaposition of your product being so expensive to be profitable in this price range, it might be a little too much for what they're trying to achieve. Like just feeding birds, right? where it's like kind of pastime and all of these are pretty good. I don't know that this one sings a sweet melody to me in the same way that bone meal does. Um, <laughs> so weed and grass killer. It's an interesting one for sure. Again, old boring market. Let's check it out. Weed. Sometimes I like to, um, Weeding grass killer, there it is. Sometimes I like to just type into the search bar, see what comes up if I'm kind of unsure of what the search term is going to be. Whoops. Okay. I like to take a look at what's going on in the sponsored brand positions as well. Okay, pet safe weed spray whole new audience there. Okay, cool. Now let's open up our old friend, Helium 10, look at some of the sales, look at some of that uh, market trend for the search volume. By the way, with formulation here, I don't think it'd be too complex. A lot of things like this, for my understanding at least, is 
manufacturers locally will have pre-made formulas. And if you wanted to improve on that formula or take some aspects away from that formula, um, it would just be a lot of outreach to work with companies that can do it until you find one. So here we start to see some listings like this. This one's doing 35,000, 1,700 sales per month. Um, they're just a US seller and they have um, 3,000 reviews, so not too many. This one, which by the way, that I again, don't even look at it through the lens of like necessarily reviews. I think total market size is more important. So can you compete with the volume of sales that some of these are doing? And keep in mind, your goal in the first year is not going to be to outsell the numbers here. You wanna do higher ticket sales, meaning you're one of the premium options, fewer of those sales, and convert heavily. So kind of stand your ground, take your place in the market, and um, develop a specific product for the person like maybe with the pet that still works very effectively, but now bring in this modern branding element. Like all of these, we can all agree, these all just look like shit. Like they're not, they're not speaking to me. Like why do we not have fun packaging for some of this stuff? It's very traditional. I mean, it, it makes sense for what it is, but it's just so old and antiquated. I mean, seriously, if you had a weed killing spray that was safe for pets, and like you branded it in a way like Liquid Death did, or like Poppy did. I mean, it's hard to believe that wouldn't work. I'm, I'm just starting to see examples of markets popping up everywhere, everywhere in front of me. Uh, I really wanna to get to the Tomcat thing. I would back burner the, the pesticide thing, but this, and some of these, by the way, have like, regulations you have to look into and barriers to entry, which is actually okay. It's definitely okay. Um, because as long as it's achievable, if it's just time and paperwork, that's fine. Testing and maybe even if it's a thousand dollars, something like, just get curious about what would it take? Um, this is not, we're not building SpaceX here. It's not like, don't underestimate yourself. You can do, you can build a business. I did it. I have, like I said, no college degree, um, just through running into problems, running into walls, and then getting curious. Like, what would it take to solve this? And can I handle that? And if you can't, you just go back to finding a market that you could handle. There is a perfect window in there. Um, by the way, if you ever need help, I have a course down below. It's pay what you want, pay what you can afford. So I made that because I just wanted to make business information highly accessible. However, it's not free. I mean, these videos are free because you won't value it if it's not free. My goal is to get people actually in a community working together, figure out what's true, what's right, and uh, what's working. So literally for a dollar, you can join my course down below. Um, so this is basically just mouse poison. This is, um, this is scaring me a little bit, like the can't be shipped to your location thing. Again, this is one of those where it's like, yeah, Selling poison, I don't know. That seems like, just inherently, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. The bone meal, though. <laughs> the bone meal, though. Bone meal, sweet. Okay. Bone meal, check. Let's try and find another one. And the way that I'm going to do this, I'm going to go to Helium 10. Um, I'll meet up with you in one second. Okay. Black box. Helium 10. Let's get it. So, keywords. This is like, again, you can, it's kind of fun to do this sometimes. You can vet out, like just show me things with 5,000 search volume, but maybe not more than 40,000. It's just too much. Let's even crush that back. Not more than 30,000. And then like only show me things where people make 20 grand a month to 180. Review count, don't care. Markets. Almost don't care either. Let's just check out those general filters. Because we can look at a bunch of ideas. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We just scroll past it. I mean, facial razor for women. That actually is calling me. Like, is anyone doing that in a way that 
speaks to that audience. You know, it's one of those things where it's like, is it kind of like uh, stigmatized? Or can we just like make the best facial razor for women? I don't know. So I guess that's the real, like Schick is kind of doing it. But yeah, they're not like drilling into the point, like the search term that people are looking up in... This is a cool feature of Helium 10. Um, oh, it went away for some reason. The search time is 17,000. So like people are looking for that. And yet, I don't really see that being said. Okay, face razors for women's being said. There's not really on the packaging. Um, okay, I honestly, it's, it's not the worst thing ever. Taser gun, now that would be kind of cool, but seems like there'd be potential issues i don't know um it's too complicated for one thing like i said i like selling boring commodities bone meals more my speed <laughs> mm. so it's just a lot of scrolling by stuff and then i stop when i'm like is this something that's probably boring and yet easy to source locally and so i have this whole mental checklist of things i'm thinking through but it's more intuition based. It's not like I'm actively thinking and everyone like, is this a blah, 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 blah. It's kind of just, if it stands out to me as something I can picture being, we already know there's a lot of search volume, a lot of interest there. Like what would be my way in? Is someone missing something here? So even eardrops, like could we do eardrops? And then I, I also think like, is this something that I could work on for five years? So it's like, if I crush it in eardrops, I can actually build a seven figure acquirable company. Does that make sense? It's like, it's big enough to work on for a long time. And there's, a, there's actually a cool trick you can use. Uh, I've gone over this in other videos, but let me do this really quick. Do I have it in my bookmarks? I don't think I do. Well, we'll start from scratch. That's fine. There's this really cool trick. M many of you might know this. Um, if we do improve memory, it's from a book called Choose by Ryan Levesque. Improve memory, beekeeping, that pro level typing coming in clutch. So this creates kind of like market boundaries. And this was found to be the perfect market size to sell in. Um, so if I just did like another random, well, that's not going to have anything. Three finger typing, what's going on? So that's a little too small, you see what I'm saying? Um, so you you use all of those as reference points to create a market size that has been proven to be the right size to build a seven figure company in. And then you use this one as the one where you test your idea. And you could play around with ideas. If you don't know what to type, just go to Google and see what autofills because that's where they're pulling their results from. Um, this is interesting. So Are there disruptive sellers? No, no one really stands out to me as like, this is the clear thing. Maybe this one, the organic ear oil, that one actually stands out to me, but not in like a new disruptive way and just kind of like, a, oh, it's like the disruptive homeopathic way. Not disruptive, it's just like the homeopathic way. But would there be one where it's like, and to be fair, you don't, you don't wanna push it to the extreme every time, but there's ways to do packaging and brand design in which I feel like this product's made for me more than just like, this is kind of a big company who has a solution to my problem, I'll get it. So we'd wanna think, what is someone experiencing when they have, when they need eardrops? What state of mind are they in when they're looking for this? How can we um, almost poke fun at it? Where Take it too far, reel it back a little. What would that look like? And um, yeah, interesting. Okay, this one isn't bad. I'm actually, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, we might have to get, um, this is where I start to lose a little bit of the understanding of the next steps involved and I would have to go start Google searching. Like what kind of requirements are necessary to sell in a market like this? Do I need it to be tested? Can I just sell a product that people put in their ears? I don't really know what 
what happens next. But that's part of the fun of uh, entrepreneurship and business creation is, well, people are selling it, so it's possible. Um, <laughs> is it just a small certification? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I, I want to discourage people from getting caught up in the potential difficulty of something and just actually try it. And if it gets too difficult and you know that you don't have the resources to handle that and you need to pay $1,000 for every state to get certified, it's like, okay, it's not going to work for you. That's okay. Just go back. Like I said, just restart. It's fine. Um, this one, yeah, the market size looks good. I like the market size. There's like a few big dogs, um, you know, Debrox, uh, Highlands, or sorry, not Highlands, it's this one, and, okay, Zimox. Okay. Oh, that's for dogs. Interesting. That, again, another potential market. This one is kind of interesting to me. Eardrops. It's really small, really light. The marketplace doesn't look too angry either. Like, I don't like when I see, like, a bunch of three-star review ratings average. Can we hold a four-and-a-half-star rating down? And who, which, which uncontested market space would be most likely to leave us good reviews so maybe it's like people with swimmers ear are easier and more likely to leave uh to treat and more likely to leave a good review than someone who's like got ear ringing or someone who just has an ear ache or an ear infection because naturally your body's going to fix that in like a certain period of time maybe they're the person who we want to target so like they're for ear uh i don't see the word infection irritation earache okay um Maybe you can't even use the word infection on here. but Like, how hard did Mary have to work? You know what I'm saying? It's not a great listing. It's not. It is not a great listing. They're doing 40K a month. Like, they clearly don't have a great understanding of who they're selling to because they're putting everyone. When you see a brand puts everyone as their target customer, it's not right. Like, pick someone and make it for them. Oh, God. I don't want to see those images. I feel like I could take Mary down. <laughs> it is funny. I'm like, I have a little bit of this, like, branding experience now, and I'm like, I go into these, like, old, boring markets, and I'm like, Nice try, but I still feel like I could win here. Um, granted, the portfolio is not huge yet, right? I'm still learning. I'm still young, still building my business. But um, it, you do start to feel like, how can I just make it s so good that it wouldn't fail? Like there, there's a level at which you made an eardrop where it just blew people's minds how good it was. And what would it take to get there? And could you get it there um, with the amount of money you have available? Like if we had... Elon Musk working on an eardrop, it'd be the best ear eardrop ever. It'd just pour everything into it, make the best thing possible like he does with everything, and it would sell like hell. Um, so that's the way that I try and approach things. It's just like, make it too good to fail. Subscribe down below, and thank you for subscribing down below if you already did. Um, and I'll catch you in another video. Later.